Halfway into my project for evolutionary robotics, I got a new idea to evolve a neural network that could play a mobile game I had recently downloaded called 2048. In 2048, there is a board of tiles. Each game begins with two tiles, and every time a tile is placed, there is a 1 in 10 chance that the tile will be 4, otherwise it will be 2. The goal is simple, maximize your score by merging tiles of equal value. To merge a tile, all of the cards must be shifted in a single direction, up, down, left, or right. During this shift, tiles of equal values are merged, and the score is incremented by the values of any newly merged tiles. As a particular tile grows in value, the player must work on building other tiles up to match the high tile in order to progress. Once a player gets to the 1024 tile, they must basically start again to build up another tile, the 1024, in order to reach 2048. Yet, at each step along the way to that next 1024 tile, the difficulty increases and the game becomes an exercise in maintaining a nice orderly board of tiles at all times. To evolve the controllers, I built my own custom simulator and used another HyperNeat implementation, which is, well, a Java implementation of HyperNeat. Each neural network uses 16 input neurons that correspond to the 16 possible spaces on the board, and two output neurons that indicate the controller's next move after being fed inputs from the board. The input value for a given space on the board is found by taking the log base 2 of its face value and dividing it by the log base 2 value of the current highest tile. In this way, the highest tile on the board is always seen by the controllers as 1, while lesser tiles are some set of simple fractions depending on the current board. In my simulator, this value is reflected in the alpha channel of each tile's color, and the numbers may be turned off, allowing a better view of what the neural networks receive as input at the beginning of each turn. The darker the tile, the closer the input value is to 1. To evaluate the neural networks, I used two different measures of fitness. The original scoring mechanism in which the score is incremented every time a tile merge occurs, and a score based on the running sum of the empty tiles on the board divided by the total number of tiles after a successful move. Both of these fitness functions were used to evaluate each controller in 100 randomly generated deterministic games. After each run of evolution, the controllers were all tested in a second set of 100 games. The scores obtained from these final 100 games were then comparable among different setups. While working on this, I was presented with a dilemma. What should I do when the controllers attempt to make an illegal move? At first, I opted to do what the original game did and simply ignore the illegal move attempt and give the same input once again to the controller. This somewhat worked, but many controllers would simply repeat the same illegal move ad infinitum. So I introduced a limit to the number of illegal moves allowed. In the first experiment, the controllers were evolved for a thousand generations with a maximum of ten illegal moves in a row, after which the game would end. At the end of each run, however, the stakes were raised and the controllers were allowed no illegal moves, so one mistake meant game over. The evolved controllers were found to perform significantly better than the average random controller, and the original score fitness function worked significantly better than the empty tiles fitness function. For the second experiment, I dropped down to 150 generations and did away with the idea of a maximum limit of illegal moves. Instead of ignoring illegal moves and trying again, the remaining three moves are automatically attempted in an order respecting the original move until one is found to be legal. Unlike the previous experiment, this effectively forces the controllers to finish every game. The random controller in this case was allowed 100 illegal moves in a row, since it's basically impossible to roll a four-sided die 100 times and not get each side at least once, the random controllers finished every game like the evolved controllers. Out of all experiments, these controllers performed the best, with no significant difference determined between the two fitness functions. But maybe I was wrong about the controllers in experiment 1, and they just needed more room to make illegal moves. So, for my final experiment, I allowed the controllers to make 100 illegal moves in a row before losing in both sets of trial games. 
In this case, the original score fitness function again proves slightly more effective than the empty tiles fitness function, but this time both sets of controllers significantly underperformed relative to their random controller counterpart. So, to wrap up, how do the best of the best controllers evolved in these experiments perform compared to other AI implementations, or even humans? I don't have hard data to support this assertion, but I strongly suspect not well. Not very well at all.